Hey guys, I'm James, and you're watching behind the scenes of the Speed Freaks Builder Series. For full episodes, be sure to head over to Anthony's YouTube channel for the bull. If you missed last week's episode, we saw how Ant was able to mod the gas tank to fit the husky neck to the CX frame. It was a real test of determination and patience, so it's definitely worth going back and checking it out. In fact, there's a convenient playlist at the end of this video where you can catch up on all the progress so far. This week, we take a look at the handlebar and bar mounted components that you helped us pick for this tricked out tracker. First, we decided to go with Renthal Bars. With over 40 years of experience, Renthal is one of the top manufacturers in the bar game and have helped win countless titles on and off-road. It was a perfect choice for this build. We shot the ends of these Renthals in a pair of long-lasting TPV rubber Biltwell Torker grips. Not only are they durable, but man do they feel good with a diamond pattern pillow texture surface. Next, we fitted these bars with a pair of super slick black-on-black -black Moto Gadget M switches. We chose the two-button style for not only function, but to keep the minimalist aesthetic going too. These switches declutter the bars and are just beautiful units to look at and operate. Flat track fans know that brakes are seldom used during an actual race, with some racers electing to ditch the front brake altogether. Now, we're all for being a badass, but we'd also like you to have the opportunity to be a badass tomorrow. So with front brakes retained on the CX, that means we'll need to add a brake master cylinder with a fresh set of lines to these Renthals. We're using a 14mm piston Nissan hydraulic front brake master cylinder fitted with Goodridge steel braided line and matching Goodridge banjo bolts. Solid. Now, if you're still running old, spongy, expanding rubber lines, boy, do we have a treat for you. Switching to a quality set of steel braided lines is almost as good as a cold beer in a hot shower. For the left hand side, we went with a GP style aluminum clutch lever and perch setup that we mated with a Motion Pro clutch cable. In fact, we use Motion Pro cables for the push pull throttle, tack, speedo, and choke. There aren't many brands one can universally boast, but in my 20 plus years of experience in this industry, I found that anything I've come across with a Motion Pro logo can be trusted. Why, you ask? Well, lack of warranty returns, failures, missed ships, immediately working after replacing a different brand new product, consistency, reliability, and performance. Next question. Seriously, drop any questions you have in the comments below. We'd love to hear what you guys are thinking. And while you're down there, like us, subscribe, and hit that bell. All the parts mentioned in this episode are available at DimeCityCycles.com, and a full build list with links is also in the description below. It's absolutely amazing what changing out a few parts like bars and switches can do for the aesthetic and feel of a bike. Whoever wins this build is going to love the cockpit and hanging out to these Renthals as they rip down the flats. And that whoever could be you! So go to DimeCityCycles.com today and enter to win this very speed machine for as little as 5 bucks. Donate more and you get an entry for every $5 donated. Got a spare G and a pension for philanthropy? That's 200 entries! So be a hero and help throttle cancer. Thanks for watching. Be sure to tune in next Friday for another behind the scenes look at the Speed Freaks Builder Series. Run your way down here to comment, like, subscribe, share, and hit that bell to get all the latest DCC YouTube content. And while you're at it, take a tour of these old videos to see what you missed. Also, be sure to visit DimeCityCycles.com. And thanks for watching.